again. Do you hear me, baby? I'm gonna tell you something. Hey, this is Al McGee with your entertainment ticket. I'm here with a guy I saw on stage, and he's funny, hilarious, Michael Micah. Bam Bam White. Micah, Bam Bam White. Hey, welcome, White. Thanks, man. Good to have you. Hey, thanks for having me, brother. Just sitting here. Uh, good to be in Miami. Miami, Miami. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was nice and warm, and the hurricane missed us this week. Thank God. And <laughs> thank God the hurricane. I, I think Irene knew I was coming. I got an ex-girl named Irene. So I think she was like, no, nah, that nigga gonna come to Miami. We're going to keep going somewhere to New York. I appreciate that. <laughs> man, how did you get started in stand-up? Because you're a funny guy. Uh it was, really, man, I always wanted to be an entertainer. You know, one thing about it is uh, I used to sing a lot. Of course, like every dude in the hood, I was a rapper at one point. Yeah. What intrigued me about comedy was uh, the risk. You know, when, when you're rapping and when you're singing and when you're playing music, you got a lot of things that can back you up. But when you're doing comedy, it's just you. And you're out there with, without anything, a net up under you. So that intrigued me. Um, so in 96, man, Ricky Smiley had an open mic night in Fairfield, Alabama. Um, so I went and tried it. People laughed, and I thought to myself, you know what? This might be the deal right here. So I just kept doing it. So you're from Alabama, huh? Birmingham, Alabama. Born and raised. Oh, yeah, I'm familiar with that because my people are from outside Birmingham, too. What part? What part? Uh, Silicon, Alabama. Oh, yeah, you told me that. The home of Jim Neighbors. People don't remember that. Goma Pow. Yeah, that, that, dang. You, yeah, now, I'm going to say this to the ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> He is telling the truth because the only way you know about Silicaga is you got to know about Silicaga. <laughs> that is not something people just throw up in the air. So, yeah, that's what's up, man. But, you know, all of us got some Southern bread. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah, and yeah, also, this right here, you got some Southern bread. That's right. From the migration, you know, uh, African Americans' uh, ancestors migrated from the South to the North from 1900s to 1970s. That's right. Because conditions right. was horrible and white people were horrible. At that right. time. And uh, even if you go to some other cities, like, for example, Chicago, I always say this. Chicago is the most northern, southern city it sure I've is. ever been to in my life. <laughs> yeah, that's where I was born. So, yeah, so I, <laughs> once again, there we have it. The cornbread, the greens, the ham hocks, and the chitlins. <laughs> and the chitlins. But, yeah, so, yes, I love Chicago, though. And a lot of you just that, just the culture, man, you know. Even when you go up there and listen to the people talk. You know, they, they they might not sound Southern like we sound Southern, but they Southern. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Now, what type of comedy do you do? Uh, uh, is it fresh, clean? What, 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 what style of comedy do you do? Well, I'm a chameleon of the environment. Let me first say that. Um, however, I would say when it comes to what I prefer to do, I, I like talking about self. You know, I'm a, I like talking about my life, my point of view on things. You know, things I've seen that maybe you think it, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. <laughs> uh, um, that's my style. You know, I like talking a lot about my family uh, because a lot of things, you know, a lot of times you think it's just my family. Oh, but, yeah. But when you say it, you find out it's everybody's family, uh -huh. you know. Um, my drunk uncle, George Elwood, you know, I love talking about George Elwood, and everybody got a drunk uncle in their family. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, you might be the drunk person that I'm talking about. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that, that's pretty much my style of comedy, man. Just my point of view, my life, my family. Uh, I'm not really into much of the, you know, I'm not going to say the crude stuff, but not too much of the crude stuff. And the political stuff, too. You into that, too? Um, I do like the political stuff to an extent, but not to be uh, persuasive. Mm -hmm. You know, I just like, to, you know, to crack on, like, uh, the ignorance that happens in the political parties, both Democrat and Republican. But most of my crowds... Uh, are pretty much mixed. They're 50-50. Mm -hmm. So the reason I don't talk too much politics is because I don't want to start no crap. You know what I'm saying? I want to keep everybody at peace. I want us all to laugh. <laughs> and when we leave, everybody be happy. You know, so I, I lay off it a little bit. Well, you know, many people, though, when they see co comedians, they think, oh, it's easy. I can do that. You know, and, and, and I, I'm a former comedian myself, so gotcha. I know what you go through. But tell our audience how easy or how it's not easy. I'll, I'll say this. Um, Comedy is, there are a lot more elements to it than you would think that there is. Um, it is a true art. You know, uh, when, when comedians, when we talk loud, we're talking loud for a reason. When we talk soft, we talk soft for a reason. When we speed up, we speed up for a reason. When we pause, we pause for a reason. And those things, you like, you, you could be in the backyard cracking with your buddy and everybody in the backyard laughing, but that's different from going on stage yeah. and trying to perform in front of, 1,500, 3,000 people you ain't never seen in your life. You know, you don't know those people. So you got to have this art down 
that allows you to get what's inside of you out to where they can translate to them to make them laugh. So it, it is pretty difficult. It's not as easy as what you think it is, which is, once again, why I wanted to do it, because I thought it was the most difficult art. So, no, it's not for all you little cracking people at school that think, yo, I can become a comedian because I know how to crack. Come on, bring it. See what happens. It hurts your heart. Now, I see many comedians, though, now they're going from television and to the movies, too. Is that some of your uh, future endeavors? Yeah, absolutely. I was um, actually I, I've been um, I was in a movie uh, Unstoppable with Denzel Washington. Oh, you were? Yep. I saw uh, that. Now I had my little small part. In order for me to show you, I got to freeze it, circle my face, and tell you what I had on. <laughs> but I was, I am in that movie. Yes, I am. Um, I was also in the um, television show Army Wives, which oh, okay. comes on Lifetime Network. Right. Um, I had a little spoof in there. Um, but that is what I want to eventually get into. That um, some comics do it a different way, like Kevin Hart. Um, he blew up in the movies first. He started doing a lot of movies and things right. first. Now he's tearing the comedy scene up on, I mean, he's on fire right now. Um, versus you get some people that blow up in comedy first. Um, for example, like uh, Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy was this phenomenal comedian first, and after that, the movies, movies, movies. Oh, yeah. And I think that's probably going to be my way that it happens. Um, Gary Owen, he was doing comedy for a long time, um, but he started getting in these movies. And now the comedy is starting to translate over and the people are coming out because they're seeing them in Tyler Perry House of Pain. They've seen them in college. They've seen them in Little Man. They'll see them in the new movie with um, the Steve Harvey book that, they, that they're doing with Kevin Hart. Um, so I think my avenue is going to be comedy first, then this movie stuff's going to start kicking off. Wow. And I feel, it. I feel it. Wow, I hope you have much success with that. Now, also in comedy, you want to express the truth in comedy too. Now, is that hard to do, try to tell the people the truth? It, it's not hard. Well, first of all, if you're an American, it's hard to tell the truth anyway. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, we're just prone to lie because that's the only way we can get what we want. Um, but as far as uh, it's not really hard to tell the truth. I think the hardest part is to be able to tell the truth and bring the funny. Yeah. It's being able to do those two things at the same time. Um, I would say probably 85% of all of my jokes, there's a kernel truth to it. But I, sometimes you have to add that 15% of ignorance, mm -hmm. you know, of, of ignorance. To, to get that extra um to bring that life to the joke. Uh, like when I talk about, i tell you a, a quick story, a true story. Uh, when I was a kid, um, three years old, I, my uncle brought, Uncle George L, brought a little kitten home, and uh, my grandmama let me name the kitten. Now, you don't let a three-year-old name nothing. <laughs> so I named the cat Dingaling. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, you would have thought that my grandmother would be like, no, we can't keep the name. But we kept the name Dingaling. Never had a problem until I was in the third grade, second grade. And uh, right before I got ready to go to school one day, I found out that that was the day Dingaling, my uncle brought Dingaling home. So I decided to call the radio station to wish Dingaling a happy birthday. So I called the radio station. They answered the phone, 107.7. They said, how would you like to wish a happy birthday to? I said, my name is Michael White. I'm in the second grade at Price Elementary. And I want to wish my Dingaling a happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and the guy was like, you want to do what? <laughs> I said, I want to wish my ding -a a happy birthday. And he was like, is it your birthday? I said, no. He said, well, how is it your ding -a birthday? I said, well, when I was three years old, my uncle brought my ding -a home. <laughs> now, now, I know what I'm talking about, but he don't know what I'm talking about. So I go to school. What I didn't know was my teacher was listening to the morning show. Uh -oh. She don't even let me go to class. She sent me straight to the office. I go in the office. The principal's like, Michael, what did you say on the radio station this morning? I said, all I said was, is, I want to wish my ding a happy birthday. That's all I said. He said, I'm calling your grandmama. He called my grandmama. My grandma picked up the phone. He said, ma'am, are you aware that Micah is on the radio station and has also been to school talking about his ding -a My grandmama said, oh, I don't worry about it. His ding -a is my cat. <laughs> I messed everything up. <laughs> Man, I got home. It was white Cavaliers with government tags in front of my house. They about to take me from my grandma because I'm a ding -a -ling. That, that, that is a true story. But you know what's funny? When I walked in the house, guess what the social worker was doing? <laughs> Playing with, with ding -a -ling. <laughs> That's a so, good one, man. But that's a true story, you know. So sometimes you can just tell them exactly how they are and, 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 and it just come to light. But sometimes you got to add a little, you know, bells and whistles just to bring a little entertainment to it. But so I would say it is hard, but after you do it for a while, it becomes second nature to you. You know man. how to do it. Yeah, it sure is, man. Well, Michael, bam, bam, not women. The bam, bam, where'd you get that from? <sighs> See, man, these people going to think I'm a good person until I say this. <laughs> I was in middle school, man. I got into a fight, man, one day before school started. And uh, three guys tried to jump on me. And I got a stick. 
And uh, when the principal came in the office, um, she came in the office and said, I need to see Tonio, Courtney, uh, Carrie, and I need to see uh, Mr. Bam Bam. And when I walked back to class, the teacher was like, Mr. Bam Bam. So from that point, seventh grade on, then you got it, Bam Bam. Now, for the ladies, if you thought it was something else, forget what I just said. What you thought is what it is. <laughs> Bam Bam, thanks a lot, thanks man. A lot, brother. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, from my home state, my father's home state, homie, Chicago. He also in Chicago. Yeah. I am so happy to have Bam Bam here on your entertainment ticket. Keep watching us every day and the day after, baby. Peace. And out. Hey, hey. Look at him. Do you hear me, baby? Tell you something.